So what we've got to do during this fast, we've got to claim that reward. A revival that hit America. And it was continued through fasting and prayer. birth certificate when he was 14 years old and he changed it to uh, to show that he was old enough to join the Marines and uh, he landed there in Vietnam and seven days later he was killed it's uh, as you read 997 of these soldiers were killed the first day 1,148 were killed the last day, the day they were to leave. 31 sets of brothers were killed, and eight women were killed. But there was a price. There was a price that people paid for our freedom here. And there's a price that we have to pay if we're going to be men and women of God. If we're going to be Christ-like, if we are going to be Christians... If we're going to walk a life where nothing is impossible, nothing is impossible. I believe that with all my heart. I don't believe that we learn to cope. I believe that we learn to rise up and take authority over the demons and over the devils that come to destroy us. In the book of Leviticus, it talks about the law of the burnt offering. And it's very interesting because it talks about in chapter 16, that when they started the fire, actually God started the fire on the altar. They didn't, uh, Aaron and his sons didn't take matches or flint and try to spark and get a fire going on the altar. They brought the sacrifice and suddenly fire came from heaven and it smote the sacrifice and it, and it ignited. Well, that's the way it is with us. We get born again. And when we get born again, God starts the fire. Hallelujah to Jesus. And it's supernatural. There's a change that takes place. But it's up to us to keep the fire burning. It was up to the priest to come in with fresh wood and take the ashes away and clean up the area and to keep that fire burning. It's up to us to keep the Holy Ghost stirred up within us. Paul wrote Timothy and he says, stir up the gift of God that was given unto you by the laying on of hands. There must be a stirring up of the Holy Ghost. There's a price that you pay. There, there's time that you have to give to God. You have to purpose in your heart to serve the Lord. You know, you don't plant weeds in your garden. You don't plan to backslide, but you get cold. You let that fire go out. And so for a purpose, for, for a person to succeed in their prayer life. The Bible says, And nothing shall be impossible unto you, howbeit this cometh not by prayer and fasting. If you have faith as the grain of a mustard seed, say unto this mountain, say unto this sickness, say unto poverty, say unto trouble, be removed to yonder place, and it shall be removed. Nothing will be impossible unto you. But... So the seed, the seed is the Word of God. If you don't read the Bible, you won't have any faith. Your, your, your faith is based upon what God says. If you just go by prayer, and all you do is pray, there's some days you get up and you pray and you feel great. And there are other days you get up and you pray and you don't feel anything. And then you begin to base your experience with God on how you feel. Feelings come and feelings go. And feelings are deceiving. We must base our faith on the Word of God. None else is worth believing. So it comes from the Word of God. I made a vow to God. I made a, a vow that I have kept. And, and that is never would a day pass that I would not read the Bible. Do you think that vow came easy? Do you think that's all been just wonderful experiences? There's been times I didn't feel like reading the Bible. 
Sometimes I didn't feel I was saved. Sometimes I didn't feel anything, but I read that Bible. There are times I'd gotten in bed, I was so tired, and then I remembered, I don't think I read the Bible today. And I've gotten out of bed, and I found the Word of God, and I've begun to read it. There are times I've read one verse. There are times I've read 20 chapters. But I have read the Word of God, and the Word of God will sustain you. It has sustained me and helped me to stay true to my wife. I've never been unfaithful to my wife. And I believe it's the Word of God that enables a person to, to, to live for God. And then you must pray. I have prepared a prayer guide, and I hope you got one of these prayer guides. This is the seventh month. July is the seventh month. And it's very interesting, seven is the number of fullness, it's the number of completion, it's the number of blessing. Say with me, it's the number of blessing. We're in 2014, and I believe it's the year of a double blessing. But on the seventh day, God completed the creation. Pharaoh's dream spoke of seven good years and seven bad years. Samson had seven locks of hair. There were seven devils that were cast out of Mary Magdala. Pentecost is seven times, seven days from Passover. There are seven spirits in the book of Revelations. Every seventh year, a Hebrew slave was set free. And I believe that this is a month of great blessings. It is the most pronounced number in all of the Bible. And tomorrow is seven, seven, fourteen. Tomorrow is a miracle day. Tomorrow is a day of blessing that you must stand your ground and believe God for that blessing. Oh, hallelujah to Jesus. Praise God. But prayer doesn't come easy. You have to take a time to pray. And I ask you to declare the power of the Holy Ghost to be stirred in your life. I, I was up close to Chicago, and a few years ago, I, I crashed an airplane there. And it was really during the time that I was, I was we were trying to get this television station over in Israel. And uh, when I crashed that plane, I, I remember I, I got out of the plane, and the fireman came, and I hit the runway at 100 miles an hour, slid across that pavement knocked out those airplane lights that light the uh, uh, runway at night, slid over to a cornfield. And uh, I got out of that plane. The, the people came. They said, you okay? I said, I'm fine. I said, this is to the glory of God. I said, this is what tithing does. If you guys don't tithe, you better start tithing. I got angels that go fly with me because I honor God. And they started laughing but I knew they didn't tithe. Hallelujah. But God, God spared me. And I remember when I got to the room, when I got to my room, I went in there and I sat down and I realized that I almost was killed. And I just, I just, I just broke down and began to cry. I began to just thank God for what God had done. I had to preach that night. And I went to the service, I preached, and then my immune system just crashed. I went into shock. And, uh, for the next month, I just, I, I, anything that came along, it seemed like I did not have the immune system in my body to fight it. And I, I was praying, and I felt like God spoke to me that when you took on this project in Israel, you took on another level of a devil. And that devil was Baal. Baal was the prince of darkness over Israel. These demons don't get old and retire and get on Social Security. They're spirit beings. And the same demons that fought against Christ and fought against the apostles and fought against the prophets in the Bible are the demons that you come against when you're there in that part of the world. People think when they go to Israel, oh, this is the most holy place in the world. It's the most demonic place in the world. And there's spiritual warfare. And I, I backed off the station because I saw that I did not have the prayer cover. I did not have people praying. We began to reorganize it. And on this, 
I have a place in here to pray for Bob Rogers. And if you don't pray for me, I'm going to come after you and I'm going to knock on your door at three o'clock in the morning and say, wake up, it's time to pray. But there must be a place of prayer over your family. There must be a pray, place of prayer over your home in the name of Jesus. You know, during, during the war of uh, 1812, the British, the British kind of let America go because they were really involved in Europe. And Napoleon, they thought he was the Antichrist. He was trying to take over the world. And when they defeated him, they asked uh, Wellington if he would come and be the general that would le lead the forces now against America. They were going to come over here and they were going to take care of their rebel children. And Wellington said, I I'm not going. He said, I'm not going over there. And so his brother-in-law went. And they devised a plan how to take America back. They were going to uh, come from the north uh, up on uh, Lake Champlain. Uh, they were going to come from the north. Uh, they were going to come from the south. They came down to New Orleans. And then they were going to come and, uh, and dissect America into four parts. They were going to come from east to west, from north to south. And when they came to the north, they came to the north there on Lake Champagne. They had with them five brigadier generals, two lieutenant generals, and 18,000 troops. America, we had there at uh, our fort, our, our fort there, we had only 3,300 troops and only one professional soldiers. And so they began to pray. And they said, God, without your help, we will be destroyed. And this will begin to be the demise and the destruction of America. And so God gave them a plan. They had eight boats. Five of those were gunships and, and three of those were little frigates. And they brought them there into the harbor. Well, the, uh, and they anchored them into the harbor to try to use them as gunships against this flotilla that the British had. And it was in, in a harbor, and the plan was to have the British gunships sail into the harbor, blow these little American ships out of the water, and then the 18,000 troops would attack the fort, and this would begin the conquest to destroy America. America's Christian heritage has all but fallen apart around us. But why? In this new CD teaching, The Intersection of Liberty and Church Street by Dr. Bob Rogers discover the truth behind why our nation was founded and the impact that these two streets in one of our nation's largest cities hold both in our past and today. Call now and ask for The Intersection of Liberty and Church Street by Dr. Bob Rogers. And with your best love gift to this ministry, we will send you this all new teaching. Call now. 1-888-613-6080 or visit bobrogersministries.org Now you can watch the Acts 2 Impartation Conference presented by CGIA live from the Evangel World Prayer Conference Center in Louisville, Kentucky September 14th through the 16th on YouTube and Facebook Visit CGIAmericas.com for more information. For the strength when I am weak. For the warmth when I am cold. I turn to you. Call or go online now for more information on inpatient and outpatient programs at the City of Hope Recovery Center. Get a tattoo this month. I want you to tattoo these scriptures on your chest. 
The first is from Galatians 6, 9. It says this, Be not weary in well-doing, but in due season ye shall reap if ye faint not. One of our pastors sent that to me. He texted that. He said, God spoke to me this morning as I was in prayer. And God sent me this, gave me this scripture for you. And many times we become weary. And I believe the devil sends demons that attack us. And we become tired. And we become uh, uh, blinded to what the devil is doing. But I declare to you, don't give up. Don't give up praying for those family members. Don't be weary in well-doing. For in due season ye shall reap if you faint not. The second promise is found in the book of, of uh, John, 1 John 4.4. 4. Ye are of God, little children, and overcome them, because greater is he that's within you than he that's within the world. The power of the Holy Spirit within us is greater than all the demons that would attack your family and your home and your money. God knows how to direct you. God can speak to you. God can show you the way out. There used to be a song, God knows the way through the wilderness, and all we have to do is follow. God, through the power of the Holy Spirit, is not walking down the aisles of this church. He's not in the car sitting on the passenger side, but He's a lot closer than that. He's inside of us. Our bodies are the temples of the Holy Ghost. He's closer than the very breath that's in our, our lungs. He's closer than the blood that's in our veins. He's inside of us. He lives inside of us. And He wants to direct us. The third promise that I want to share with you is 1 John 3, 22. And whatsoever we ask, we receive of Him because we keep His commandments and do those things that are pleasing in His sight. Whatsoever we ask, we receive of Him because we keep His commandments and do those things which are pleasing in His sight. I remember years ago, I was an evangelist and I was preaching at a little church and uh, I had, uh, was preaching Sunday through Wednesday. I had a, a vehicle that was in the shop. I had to have $1,000 to just pay for that vehicle. And I, I was praying that God would, would meet me financially. And I remember I, I came to this church. It was on a Sunday morning. I got there early. And I was in the, the vestibule. And they had on the board the income of the church. And I looked there at the income. And then it says the amount of money given to visiting uh, ministers. And I looked and it said $148. And I needed a thousand. I said, I rebuke that in the name of Jesus. <laughs> and I remember I was praying. I was praying on that Monday morning. I was on my knees. And I was praying in that little motel I was staying at. And I said, God, I really need you to help me and to bless me and to meet me. And I need a thousand dollars. And I was reading this scripture. I read this very scripture. Whatsoever things we ask, we receive of Him because we keep His commandments and do those things that are pleasing in His sight. I said, Lord, to the best of my ability, I'm trying to live for You. And I'm trying to do what You've called me to do. And You said that whatever I ask, I would receive. I need $1,000. Well, Wednesday night came and the pastor came up to me and he said, you know, Brother Bob, he said, this is the largest offering we've ever given a minister ever. And I just say, we, we're glad, you know, we, we love you. Thank you for coming. He handed me this check. Well, I, I thanked him and I got out in the car. I couldn't wait to get out in the car because I wanted to see how much it was. And I opened it up and it, and it said $800. And my heart just kind of went, Psst. and then I thought, well, you know, I learned something. On that scripture, whatsoever things you ask, we receive of him. I should have asked for 1,200. If I asked for 1,200, maybe I would have got 1,000. And next time, I'll just ask for a little bit more. And then I said, wait a minute. That's, what not, that's not what the Bible says. I asked for $1,000. I need $1,000. Lord, I need that $1,000. I'm sitting there in the... In the 
parking lot of this church. And all of a sudden, this car swings in, and this fellow pulls up right beside him. Oh, Brother Bob, we're so glad we, we caught you. Said, uh, before you left, I said, we got home, and the Lord spoke to us to give a certain amount of money in the offering. We didn't do it. And I got home. I said, well, I'm going back over there and do it. And he handed me a check for $200. <laughs> oh, hallelujah to Jesus. I believe this is a month that whatsoever things you ask, you will receive if you do what God's told you to do and you live a holy life. Oh, hallelujah to the Lord. I want us all to stand in the name of the Lord. I want everyone that will take a time to pray this month. I want you to come down here to the front. If you won't pray, there's nothing I can do to keep you to pray. You're going to sleep all day. You're not going to fast. You're going to gain 10 pounds in July. I want you to stay in your seat. Hallelujah. But if you will give God a time every day to read the Bible and to seek God, I want you to come down here. I want to pray for you in the name of Jesus. I want to ask God to put an anointing on you that will break every yoke, that will bring the answer in Jesus' name, that will bless your business, that will bless your family in the name of the Lord. You know, last night I was praying. I said, Lord, I want you to show me this. I want, you to, I want you to show me exactly what to do on this matter. I don't know what to do. And you must give me direction. And a lot of times during the day, you are so tired or you're so involved with a lot of things that many times it's hard for God to speak to you. But when you go to bed and your spirit relaxes, and you begin to calm down. That's many times when God speaks to you in the nighttime. And so I was asleep. And at 444, I woke up. And that's a sign to me. I remember I, I got up and I, I, I went into the other room. I began to pray. I prayed till 520. And uh, when I got up, the Lord spoke to me. And the Lord told me exactly, showed me what was going, I was to do. And God will direct you. The Bible says, Be ye not unwise, but understanding. Understand what the will of the Lord is. And if God has a plan for you, and God doesn't reveal that plan to you, then He's an unfair God. And so if you will seek God, God will speak to you. Ask and ye shall receive. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened unto you. God wants us to be blessed. And if we will seek Him, God will show us how to be blessed. God will break off of us whatever the devil has put on us in Jesus' name. I want you to place your hand over your heart. I want us to pray together. Say, Lord Jesus, You have a great plan for my life. I declare in the name of Jesus that I shall serve You with all of my heart. Take out of me any rebellion, self-will, selfishness, hatred, unforgiveness, take it out of me and put in me a new heart, a heart that's tender towards you, a heart that's obedient to your word. Lord, this is the seventh month. This is the month of blessings, of great blessings. And as I seek your face, I pray that you'll speak to me. You'll guide my life. And tomorrow, Lord Jesus, on 7714, I declare a miracle in my life. A great miracle. A, a marked miracle. In Jesus' name. Father, fill me with the Holy Ghost. Fill me with your power. Lead me, Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name. Forgive me of every sin. Now I want you to begin to speak out loud every member of your family. Just speak their names out to the Lord. Father, we declare today your kingdom come and your will be done in our lives and in our families. I bind every devil off of our families. I command demons that have oppressed our sons and our daughters and our family members to come out. Be broken off their lives in Jesus' name. Lord, I speak miracles to happen. I pray, Lord, for our leaders. Come on, let's begin to pray for President Obama. 
Lord, I pray old President Obama will get saved. I pray that something will happen into his life that will turn his life to God. I bind every demon that has bound him and, and held him back. I break that off of him in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Now let's pray for Israel. Father, we lift before you Israel in the name of Jesus. I declare the angels of God to cover Israel. Be with Netanyahu, Lord. Give him wisdom in Jesus' name for the glory of the Lord. Hallelujah. Reach over and join the hand of someone next to you. I want you to begin to pray for them. If you don't know how to pray for them, pray for them in the Holy Ghost. But I want you to pray and ask God's blessings and God's peace and God's power in Jesus' name to rest upon them. Lord, we pray for one another today. I pray, Lord, for what we're seeking will happen to them. I pray, Lord, the blessings of God would fall upon each one. This would be a month of prosperity, a month of healing, a month of direction, a month of, of soul winning in Jesus' name. I declare we're our soul winners. I declare we're filled with the Holy Ghost. There's power in us to bring healing and miracles and signs and wonders in the name of Jesus. Nothing shall be impossible to us. Nothing shall be held, withheld from us because we are walking uprightly before the Lord. I break generational curses. I break it in the name of Jesus Christ. May there be a change that takes place in our families for the glory of the Lord. Hallelujah. <coughs> Hallelujah to Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let's give the Lord a great big praise clap. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. America's Christian heritage has all but fallen apart around us. But why? In this new CD teaching, The Intersection of Liberty and Church Street by Dr. Bob Rogers, discover the truth behind why our nation was founded and the impact that these two streets in one of our nation's largest cities hold both in our past and today. Call now and ask for The Intersection of Liberty and Church Street by Dr. Bob Rogers. And with your best love gift to this ministry, we will send you this all-new teaching. Call now, 1-888-613-6080 or visit bobrogersministries.org. Worship. Ministry. See him walking on the water. You unlock the power of God's glory. The devil's working overtime to get people out of You can't afford to miss the Acts 2 Impartation Conference, September 14th, 15th, and 16th at the Evangel World Prayer Conference Center, 